Hello and welcome to our brief overview of Crimson 3 Communications. Redline's Crimson 3 software and hardware associated with this, such as the data station, the graphite series, G3 series, PTV and so forth, are a very powerful communication device. So we shall do several videos in regards to communications, starting with this, a very basic overview of the functions and setups, stepping through gateway blocks, um, picking on some obvious offenders with the industry such as Modbus, importation of Alan Bradley L5K files, pushing data to and from memory sticks through to the services such as SQL synchronization and then moving on to um, integrating other buses such as CAN bus. But for today we'll just stay with the basic setups. The physical ports are listed here as in the base icons you can see here and today we'll just stay with network and serial communication setups. Looking at the network side of a Redline device, in this particular instance, this particular device it has two Ethernet ports and these can be configured either as a DHCP or manual such as I'm doing today. Configuring that manually, entering in the aspects or the actual IP addresses, subnet mask, gateways are required and if need be you can push this off uh, to a DNS. Of course, setting the, uh, the speed, um, if you need to half lock that to an edge based uh, slower speed, such as a 10 meg network, you can still do that and adjust for framing, such as limits to a, say, unmanaged Ethernet system, you may need to keep the frames down, or you may have a uh, larger system that can support jumbo frames. Second Ethernet port, of course, can be configured exactly the same as the Ethernet one. And of course, once you have two Ethernets in play, you can route between both networks of some of the end connected devices simply by enabling and putting the destination, the gateways in place between the devices that are connected. Of course, you can download via the IP, but of course, you have the option of not uh, enabling this and locking the device down from this aspect. As you can see here on this port here, I only have four protocols available. If need be, I can add new network ports, up to 10 of these, and I can create a couple of new virtual ports, which we'll cover in a later, later video. The RS-232 ports and the RS-485 ports can be selected and you're straight to the driver. So stepping into configuring a driver, basically. I will pick on some obvious offenders here and build from the space for future videos. To start with, RS-485 predominantly, well, is widely still used for Modbus and as you can see here we have an extensive list of drivers in total there's over 320 drivers so browsing this list common drivers such as backnet in the building industry are there um, some of the PLCs you see within the marketplace of course um, Alan Bradley is within this list right through all of their particular um, RS485 supported uh, devices but today we'll, we'll ponder on through and find out our little friend Modbus for the sake of the example, I'm going to set this particular, um, the graphite up as a Modbus master in view of it talking to external devices. Quite simply, once you've found your appropriate driver, you adjust the settings of that driver, say for your argument's sake you're using an ASCII, your slaving timeout, your speed and your port modes. Each device then will appear under that as a slave in this particular instance, and here I have one. They come by default as entered in as device number one. And of course, as I add, add more, they come down. And I think for best practice and for the sake of uh, naming, you should rename those to the appropriate name for that particular target device to save confusion, especially during gateway block exercises. Once you have a device itself in place, you have the settings of the device, such as its node number, word ordering, uh, your limits on your framing and for more advanced settings we have the protocol options themselves. One in particular, especially to Modbus, is the ping holding register. This needs to be a valid register in the 40,000 range, in this instance 40,001 for the, uh, the um, backbeat if you like to say to actually acknowledge that devices on the network are not very handy if you need to have subsequent functions if a device is to disappear from a network. For another example, looking at an Ethernet based driver, 
we will take, say, Alan Bradley in this instance. This is a very powerful driver and it does save a substantial amount of time when trying to deploy a project. We have the ability to be able to bring an old 5K file directly and we have a very nice and very powerful back end which organizes the communications very orderly. Once you add the Alan Bradley, and of course I could add numerous of those, again, you would adjust how you would uh, talk to the unit, which port, its IP address, if there is a routing path in play, and I will stop at this section here, you would need to bring in your L5K. The next video I will do will focus solely on the L5K and gateway blocks, so please join us with that one. Thank you.